Where are 54 percent of electric vehicles made globally? The entire point of uh, Where are 54 percent of electric vehicles made globally? The whole point is No, I'm, I'm asking you a question. Where are 54 percent of electric vehicles made globally? I don't you don't know? I don't know about that number. I know that the answer the is chi the answer is China. Where is the, the critical? Is, well, wait, 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 hold on a minute. Here. Hold on a minute. Where is seventy three percent of cobalt refining? Where does it take place globally? Overseas. Where specifically? Probably China. Yeah, China. Where is most cobalt mining performed? Who owns most of the cobalt cobalt mines in the world? Probably most of that sourcing is in Africa. It's China has the majority. 77 percent of electric vehicle cathodes are made in China. 92 percent of anodes are made in China. 66 percent of battery cells are assembled in China. The New York Times recently did a report on this. The New York Times is not a notably right-wing publication. They said, can the world make an electric car battery without China? Their conclusion, the only winner so far is China. My question is, why would we want to make our auto industry dependent on supply chains in China. Why is that a good idea? We don't. Then why are you doing it? The entire point of this conversation, the entire point of this hearing, is to domesticate and make more reliable the sourcing of the materials. To then why are, you shutting, why are you shutting down critical mining in the United States? We're not. The you are. Why did you close the twin metals mine in this country earlier this year? 225,000 acres in Minnesota which mines critical minerals like copper, nickel, cobalt. Again, the entire point of this conversation is to do mining in a responsible way that also reconciles with... In a responsible way. Do, do, first of all, answer my question. Why did you close the Twin Metals mine? Because of the threat to the Boundary Waters, which is one of the largest economic drivers in Minnesota. So you think that we shouldn't have critical supply chains in the United States, jobs good-paying jobs with labor protections in the United States? Not at the expense of one of the richest fish, fisheries in the United States and the world, such as in Alaska and the Pebble Mine. Not at the, the Twin Metals Mine isn't in Alaska. It's in it Minnesota. Is, it's 225,000 acres in Minnesota. Correct. And my point is, uh, as we look to accelerate the development of domestic critical mineral mining, we have to do it in a way that does not uh, conflict with and deplete other important aspects of the economy in northern Minnesota. That includes the recreation economy and the Boundary Waters, which is uh, one of the main drivers of tourism. So you're, you're going to prioritize recreation over good-paying jobs here in this country for mining? You're going to withdraw this mine that has been online and now shutter it? The number of jobs generated by the Boundary Waters and tourism uh, dramatically uh, outpaces the potential of that mine. I thought it was critical that we had supply chains in this country, and yet you're shutting down critical mineral production in this country. Do you know instead what that's making us reliant on? Do you know what China's labor practices are? For instance, at their cobalt mine in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Have you seen the reporting on this? You'll get no argument for me that uh, domestic sourcing... They use child labor is the answer to my question. Child labor. In uh, harrowing condition. And also religion. China majority. uses Uyghur labor, yes. slave yes, labor. They yes, they do. And yet, you are making us dependent on imports from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, controlled by China, from Chinese controlled and owned mines all across the world. You're shutting down our mines here in the United States. Well, we disagree about all of that. Would you support? Well, facts are facts, and sometimes they're tough. But what's going to be really tough is when we don't have any auto jobs left in this country because you ship them all overseas, when we can't mine anything in this country because you're shutting it all down. And we all know why. It's in pursuit of your radical environmentalist agenda. That's the real answer Senator. here. So there's about a million different ways that the Biden administration sort of like climate, environment um, agenda is hurting, you know, working class Americans. And it's also hurting America's ability um, to not only, you know, become uh, to stay energy independent, but also now um, they're shutting down mining. And a lot of the resources that these Democrats are shutting down here are shifting over to China. And you see this over and over again. You see as Josh Hawley pretty much grills this guy. Number one, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about for the most part. Uh, but number two, you know, he thinks that what he's going to replace the mine with, whether it's, you know, some tourist destination, et cetera, et cetera, is going to create as many 
many jobs as the mind did in the first place. So when you get to the point where we are not energy dependent as a country, where you get to the point where we become so dependent as America on other places, particularly China, for our resources, that is not a strong position for America to be in. And it's the longer term goal of the, the climate crazies and the environmental crazies and, and all of this other stuff. The longer term goal, I believe, is to literally bring American manufacturing, to bring the American working class to its knees. They want to force this environmental agenda on America at all costs. And if you want to know what the real end game for it is, the Green New Deal still exists, by the way. The Green New Deal is what this is all about. And when you look at the Green New Deal, there is very little about the environment in it, but there is very much about this sort of left-wing socialist wish list of universal pre-K, quote-unquote free um, college, quote-unquote free healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the day, fundamentally, that agenda is what all of this stuff is about, and it is hurting working class Americans.